I'm Peter Sullivan, and I am excited to be here today talking about my new Christmas thriller, Silent Night, Fatal Night. Um, now, Silent Night, Fatal Night, we uh, have a film that features both holiday cheer and intense suspense. And um, what I love about the contrast of these two elements is that you have a time of year that is uh, traditionally regarded as very joyful and happy. Therefore, when you uh, have something that's suspenseful, uh, maybe a little darker, uh, um, you know, featuring characters that are that are sort of uh, uh, at the end of their rope, so to speak, um, juxtaposed against the happiness of the holidays, uh, it creates something that's that's much more sinister because it's not what you're expecting. Uh, to see when you walk into a house that's completely decorated for Christmas. Um, so uh, what I wanted to do was combine these genres uh, together in a way to subvert audience expectations and uh, to create a more uh, exciting and surprising uh, ride for audiences. Um, the film touches upon uh, themes of captivity and creative uh, creativity, and uh, surprisingly, uh, these are not... Um, these are not that different from one another. Um, you know, I find, and as do a lot of uh, people that work in my field, um, you know, if you're not careful, uh, you can feel trapped um, by uh, your, your work. Uh, if you are known specifically for doing one type of film or writing one type of script, uh, it's very easy to become uh, pigeonholed. And uh, or this is a person that could only do Christmas movies. This is a person that could only do thrillers. This is a person that could only do horror films. And you're not given the opportunity to to uh, play with other genres. And that's something very early on, um, you know, that I learned and, and worked to subvert. Even when I was just writing before I even started directing, I would try to balance uh, the two genres if I was going to do uh, a Christmas movie on one film, then make sure the next film was, was something other than a Christmas movie, and so on, uh, just to keep things fresh. But um, our character is someone who, who as, a, as a writer, uh, is very much trapped uh, by her past success, and people are expecting her to keep repeating it, and, um, you know, she definitely feels trapped uh, in a box, not only uh, creatively, but, you know, as it turns out, uh, quite literally. Uh, so for, for me, um, you know, the two go hand in hand in the film works, not just, uh, you know, uh, literally, but also uh, metaphorically as well. Um, I was blessed to have a wonderful cast on this show, um, Alec Camacho and um, uh, Matt Polkamp are two wonderful actors that I've worked with before, and we have a, a, a wonderful relationship and a shorthand for working together. And I was so thrilled to have the experience to go on this journey with them. And as well, we, we met some, uh, some exciting new talent along the way, including Haley Rutledge, who uh, plays uh, what I'll call the Red Herring. Uh, she is our uh, protagonist, uh, quote unquote, number one fan. Uh, however, unlike Misery, uh, this number one fan actually turns out uh, to be a, a, a hero and not an antagonist. Um, but uh, again, with with them, what I really tried to do in, in collaborating and to bring out the characters and the suspense is, is really share, uh, because I am a writer, and I am a writer who, who can definitely relate to this character, to share my journey. With, with them, especially Alex, uh, uh, what's it like to, to, you know, to be in that box and, you know, how important it is to me to, um, you know, even if once in a while you just want to write something for you and, and you just feel that, you, you know, you're just creatively exhausted doing one type of film or, or writing one type of story and what that really feels like and then finding ways to play with that metaphorically on top of the structure of a story where our protagonist is literally uh, trapped in a house. Um, the film produced, presents a unique twist on the uh, holiday film genre. Um, what, I, what inspired me was the idea of, again, um, juxtaposing two tonally different genres. And you have a film, um, you know, that, that, is, that is dark, it's a character that's trapped, it's a character who, who can't escape, uh, she's being held against her will, and, you know, 
Yes, you could do that in a dark basement or a dark and creepy house, but how creepy is it to do that in a house that's completely decorated for Christmas? A house that should be bringing someone joy, a house that should be inspiring warmth and love uh, uh, is actually uh, become a prison. And I just love uh, the irony of that and uh, that was something I definitely tried to bring to the film uh, in terms of uh, both visually and uh, story-wise. Um, the film protagonist uh, goes to an intense journey and, and her journey as a writer is she's someone who is very well known as uh, a mystery writer and she's got a very, sp a very popular uh, franchise uh, around a, a detective named Gideon and she's written a number of Gideon books, and she's sold millions of copies, and she's got a really nice living for herself. But she just reached a point where she's asking herself, is this all I'm ever going to do with my life? Is this all I'm ever going to write? And she's just so determined to prove to herself and her fans that she can do something other than Gideon books, that she's decided that she's going to step outside her box and write something different. And if this is something that I could relate to, I worked very closely um, with Alex to, to really, you know, to help her feel that. And one of the things that really helped is, you know, in the course of, of, of working on the screenplay, we started to create uh, elements from Gideon's book and incorporate them into the film where we're hearing the work that she's writing. So we can hear Mallory Dearborn, the author's words, that she's writing while under duress and it's all you know doing two things at the same time on the one hand we're getting to see what makes her such a good writer what makes Gideon so compelling but at the other hand we're also seeing her internal monologue unfold her frustrations about her current situation uh, kind of pouring out of her through this third character of Gideon and that to me made it uh, really interesting um, the visual atmosphere for Silent Night, Fatal Night, um, as I said before, it, it's very much uh, a contrast between essentially what is the story of a writer who is trapped and forced against her will to write something she doesn't want to um, by someone who stands to benefit from it. Um, you know, that's what differentiates it from, say, you know, a story uh, such as uh, Misery is... Um, you know, we have a, a character who is not just a psychopath, an antagonist that is not um, uh, just uh, completely crazy. He is someone who has a very rational reason and not completely unjustifiable uh, reason for doing this, um, which makes it interesting. And, you know, again, by telling the story against the backdrop of Christmas, with the music, we're, we're hearing Christmas music in the movie, we're seeing Christmas lights in the stores, we're seeing, you know, uh, uh, you know there's, there's, there's Christmas programming on television, they're having a Christmas meal, you know, these are all things that everyone experiences, you know, usually uh, uh, as, as a very happy uh, time of year, and the fact that, that our character is sort of silently suffering through this uh, just really makes it all the more interesting and, and cast a darker light on the, uh, the Yuletide uh, festivities. Um, something I try to do in all my films is really instill my protagonist with an incredible uh, determination, resilience, independence, and uh, Mallory is no different. Um, you know, I, I often put a lot of myself in my characters, and it doesn't matter you know, whether they're lawyers, or in this case, a writer, which I can relate to, um, or whether they're a marketing executive, or whatever it is, to me, it's so important to have a dynamic character making active choices to propel your storyline. The last thing you want is a character that's going to sit back and let the story happen to them. That's not interesting. You need a character that's going to be pushing and, and working really hard, and the harder it is for them, uh, the more interesting the story. The easier things come to them, you know, there's not a whole lot for them to overcome, but you give them a substantial enough challenge, and now it becomes exciting. And so this is no different. I really wanted to create a character, Mallory, who, you know, is forced to 
uh, find the strength within herself to overcome a situation and you know the bravery that she takes uh, to step outside the box literally and figuratively um, you know is something that I think a lot of people can relate to and it just we we see how hard she's working how how you know how hard she perseveres and we want to see her succeed um, what I, uh, I hope characters take away from Cyanide Fatal Night is something different. Um, you know, there are over a hundred uh, Christmas movies every year. Um, you know, everyone from from you know we know we know we know Hallmark and Lifetime and Netflix and now you know uh, even Fox Nation is getting into original Christmas movies. It seems like everybody's got Christmas movies going on. I'm surprised CNN doesn't have Christmas movies coming on. So with so many Christmas movies out there, how can you just become anything more than just background noise? How can you stand out? How can you take something that, that, that speaks to an audience looking for Christmas programming, but just be different and stand out? And so what I tried to do in this film was just give people a different type of a ride. You want a Christmas film, you want you you know, you want all the conventions and the you know, the, the all the, the, the visual tableau of the holidays, we'll give that to you, but we're gonna give you a story you've never seen before. A story that's not just, oh, here's you know, a city girl goes to a small town, falls in love with the farmer. Um, you know, we're gonna do something a little more interesting and uh, you know, hopefully stand out amongst the hundreds of Christmas movies that are out there. Um, upcoming projects. Uh, I've got a film that uh, I'm working on right now that will be coming your way next year. Um, it is uh, it is a thriller, uh, but it's set in a in a world that I've never uh, gotten to put on film before, so that's very exciting. And I'm also excited to be dipping my toes into uh, writing, uh, largely inspired by Mallory uh, in this film, who's a, a mystery novelist. Um, you know, I, I became motivated to, to write a novel of my own. So uh, one, of my, uh, one of my successful films, uh, The Case of the Christmas Diamond, is now available as a novel. Um, you can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble.com, or a number of other sites, both uh, print and uh, ebook. Um, you know, check it out. Uh, um, you know, I'm constantly trying to find ways to expand my own, uh, my own horizons as a, as a creative person. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just thrilled to have everybody along for the journey. So uh, thank you very much, and please enjoy Silent Night, Fatal Night, and, um, you know, have a great holiday. Thank you.